I am proud of Bill and I'm proud of being on Bill's team. Bill is exemplary. He's just an outstanding uh, individual for our young people to emulate. He focuses very much on people. He has really made a difference. Probably the most human human being I've ever known. If you start out with the idea of making a contribution, everything else will fall in place. Today we're writing the first few pages of a new chapter of this great institution. Today we're dedicating the world's premier environmental molecular sciences laboratory in honor of Bill Wiley. Who was Dr. Wiley? That is a very difficult question because he has so many things to so many people. Wiley was a man of exceptional visions and dreams. But in all of his visions, the honor of having this laboratory dedicated in his name would be beyond his wildest dreams. He started looking beyond himself. And when he looked beyond himself, he looked at all others, and he looked at the institution. And when he did that, he was able to look at what's out there in the future. What did it need to do for others in the country? I've had a strange feeling all week that he's here watching us and he's proud. Our commitment is to fulfill that destiny. Thank you. It was a great day in one sense, and it was a sad day in another sense, because the person who was responsible for making it happen was missing. But it was a grand day because everybody was happy that his vision was there. Dr. Bill Wiley's vision was transformational. Whether charting a new course for his lab, PNNL, or when as a young man he sought a future beyond the limitations of the segregated South. Bill Wiley was raised in Oxford, Mississippi, where his devoted family helped him develop a love for science and a passion for education. A passion that ultimately earned him a doctoral degree from Washington State University. Hired in 1965 as a research scientist at Patel's facility in Richland, Washington, he rose through the ranks to become lab director in 1984. That's when he met an ally in his vision for change. Six months after I arrived at PNNL, this gentleman took over, and I guess because I was new and he was new, we bonded. And his agenda was, I want to make this Pacific Northwest National Laboratory unique, and I want to create a raison d'etre for research. What Dr. Wiley did first was he basically jump-started the department by waking them up to the fact that they needed a federal investment here beyond the original facilities. The lab was the smallest of all the DOE laboratories. It was the furthest away geographically from Washington. It had no identity. It was a perfect setting for someone to create a vision. With that investment, it established really the cornerstone for modern laboratory facilities and right in the center and the cornerstone of that future facility set is the Environmental Molecular Sciences Laboratory. He really felt for PNNL to be successful, it had to have an anchor facility that was deeply rooted in science. And so he assembled a, a management team, some of his best thought leaders, to flush out that concept. And EMSL's the realization of that dream. He truly was a visionary. Bill had a vision for bringing together the computational sciences with the experimental sciences and allowing scientists then to work at the molecular level. It is comforting to all of us that this facility will be here for many, many years to come to house his spirit and his passions for all of us who follow. EMSL is a National Scientific User Facility. Uh, the acronym EMSL stands for Environmental Molecular Sciences Laboratory. So it has a focus on environmental mission involving molecules. 25 years ago, people thought in a very stovepipe manner between their disciplines, biology, chemistry, computational science. But molecular science is a horizontal translation through all of that. I think that was very unique at the time. The bringing together of collaboration and, and people working together wasn't something that was done as much at other national laboratories. I'm really proud to be the director of EMSL because I really do believe in Dr. Wiley's vision. And 
I feel like I have huge footsteps to fill. Dr. Wiley and his team anticipated that IMSL would open up a host of opportunities for PNNL. With an emphasis on molecular science, collaboration, and computers, PNNL pursued a broader range of projects for the Department of Energy and for other clients. Today, Battelle's PNNL enjoys a global reputation as a world-class scientific research facility and solutions provider. This laboratory is particularly uh, skilled in taking the fundamental sciences and the chemical sciences and the biological sciences and the radiological sciences and applying those to critical challenges in energy and in national security. Uh, we don't do the simple problems. The reason they come to us is because we can take something that's so, so unknown, some problem which has no solution, and we bring the science to the solution. In the most extraordinary way do we get to pay tribute to the life of a great man with extraordinary passion, and in so doing, has made us all advocates for basic science in this community, so that we may teach those who have not yet been taught, and so that as the United States of America, we can continue to solve our problems and enrich the lives of this community and the nation. Now I know Dr. Wiley was, was a strong proponent of science and, and, and math education. We must make sure that all children all students are competitive from a technological point of view. It's going to extend uh, far beyond the halls of the laboratory. It's all about education. Everybody thinks education is just the institutional education. No, it goes beyond that. It's your ability to educate people about <clears throat> other issues that are going on. And the only way to get out and, <clears throat> and spread that message is to get out into the public. As we developed EMSL, there was clearly a need to have a greater set of relationships with the university community that would lead to more people participating in the research agenda at PNNL and to create a series of programs for science and mathematics education. When I got here, I began to understand that Dr. Wiley was responsible for that. It was his, he acted as a champion for that. Dr. Wiley was an effective champion for science education because he connected with the community on many levels. He influenced educators as the head of Washington State University's Board of Regents. He persuaded business leaders while serving on the Washington Business Roundtable. And he received numerous honors for his civic and community activity. As proof that education creates opportunity, especially for minorities, Dr. Wiley also worked to make science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM education, a reality for young students in his community. Well, there's a variety of legacies today uh, for what Dr. Wiley inspired. One of those is uh, Delta High School, a brand new small STEM high school located here in the Tri-Cities. Dr. Wiley was very committed to science education and to bringing those connections between the laboratory and the community together. Giving them real life experiences helps to maintain that interest for them so that they can go on and discover new and great things for us. We're building that next generation so that science can continue to progress forward. We can continue to solve human problems. What this high school is, is it's made up of a very diverse set of students. They have done an interview process to look for people who bring something different to the table. And they've put them all into one high school. They come from all three cities, Pasco, Richland, and Kennaway. The idea being that the school really represents the Tri-Cities. Learning to communicate with people in different backgrounds, to understand how their wealth of experience can help inform decisions that we make in science and in areas of our life is an important quality and skill to develop in life. Delta is an outgrowth of what I call a commitment to serve the community in which Patel exists. It's through diverse perspectives, diverse experience bases, diverse sets of knowledge that we can in fact most effectively address these very complex problems that this country faces today. This whole diversity game uh, is beyond race and gender. It's diversity of thought. It's diversity of age. It's diversity of discipline. When you look at the uh, demographics of the United States, and particularly how those demographics are going to change in the future, uh, I don't think we can afford to have one elite group, if you will, be responsible for and interested in and developing all the technologies and sciences. We want everybody to have an interest in it and everybody to have an opportunity to be a participant in it. You know, I always say to uh, youngsters that interact with me, I says, you know, I'm just, just another 
black man in America. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm nothing special. I've worked hard. Whatever I did, you can do it. You want individuals to understand that it's not just this one set of characteristics that makes you a scientist. You can be, anyone can be one. It's just a matter of how hard do you want to be that. Great people have dreams. We call them visions when we embrace them. And that was Bill Wiley's challenge, to take this extraordinary dream, his good common sense, and that undeniable passion, and to visit it from mind to heart throughout this community. He's highly engaged by the community, highly regarded by the community. And uh, so to me, he's the gold standard. He's, 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 a, he's somebody that I would aspire to be like. And if I could have half of the reputation, that Bill Wiley had after I stepped out as director, I will have succeeded. I just love working in the facility. I love having his name on the facility. I love being associated with him and, and who he was. Uh, and so it's just, for me, it's, um, it's a dream come true. I think any audience that sees Bill Wiley's vision and personality, I think it's a great vehicle for getting kids, especially in the African-American community, to feel as though that they can be scientists that can make a difference. His motto, uh, stand tall, stay black, speak loudly. The stand tall is to stand upright and be proud. Stay black is about remembering who you are and remembering your ancestry. It is important. Speak loudly, he used to have the saying, you'll always be behind people unless you put yourself in front. And the only way to do that is to speak loudly about it. And people will pay attention. I have to give him uh, that, the credit for what I am today here in the organization. And so uh, I don't think of him sadly any longer. I just think of him. Mm -hmm.